guys, welcome back to Choose Your Own Path. Today, 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 is Wednesday. It is. And today, we are going to make our build for our mammoth. Alright? So, let's get ourselves set up. Alright, so we have our mammoth already painted. We still have a couple of characters to paint. We primed up all our spikes. We made a whole whack of these guys. That we're going to worry about at the end because it's just going to be added. So what I want to do is I want to add a base and almost like a scenario kind of thing. So what I did was I took the box on and I cut this 10 inches. This is about 19 inches long. We'll figure that out if we need to or not. Uh, didn't throw so the bits out. Can keep both bits together so we have a platform. And this guy is going to basically sit let's get this out, like this, but he's going to be coming downward. So we need to take this piece and kind of slice it so it looks like he's going to be charging downwards. This down here is where we have the spikes and the other characters set up. So what I did was I kept the one piece, most important. I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do here. We're going to use the Proxon. Like I told you guys, this is a great, great company. Look into them. Tell them I sent you. See what they do for you. I don't know. Um, what we want to do is we want to cut this at an angle. What we're going to do is we want to move this angle. All right? So I'm going to show you. All you do is you loosen it. And then well, you can loosen this too. This is your. This is part of the wire. But you want to get some of the wire in there. All you want to do is make sure that I what I'll do is I'll measure it to the tip. You can see where the tip is here. This is where the wire is, right here with my fingers. So if I can get you in there better. Like so. Do a quick back. So I just line it up. But I want this to basically run. And I have to move my piece a bit and I want this to run now this has to be tightened also so make sure your your wire is still tight and I want this to run right to the end so that I get a full cut all the way through now the problem with this right now is my board or my backing here I'll show you it needs to be cut longer, right? In order to get really long cuts in play. But that's okay today. We're just gonna go, gonna do good with the old good old French eye. So you wanna keep this, uh, oops, sorry. Keep the wire on this piece here, on the piece itself, it's, it has to stay on there. And all I'm gonna do is bring this down to the maximum that I can. I have to tighten up the wire so it stays tight. Okay. So we make sure that wire is tight. We'll tighten the whole arm part and we'll make sure you get a really good ding out of that. That's what you want. Almost like a guitar string. Now the process here was you would have actually uh, something in the back, like a bowl, like a, you'd have your, your board, or whatever you want to call it, keep it so it stays in play. We don't have that long enough. So all we're gonna do is use our other piece of styrofoam. See if I can get you looking at that better. And we're just gonna measure it out on the board, like so, at the straightest, now it's a little off, but that's okay. We can work with the other piece. So we're going to turn it on and all we're going to do is we're going to run it through. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us our angle to go through. If you want, we can get a little hotter. Alright, a little hotter. 
and then this through. So now we have our angle. And that's perfect, that's all we need. So we're just gonna shut off our machine. The best thing to do <coughs> is to really uh, loosen loosen your, your tight your wire. And then as you're bringing this wire back, because you want this thing, you want the, the wire has to be level, always level. And it has to be straight. Now, what you guys can do, and it's which would be very important, and I haven't done it yet because is to mark off a spot where it's exactly 90 degrees. That's a good idea. I've seen a guy who did that. He basically gotta keep this loose here. He basically kept it marked. So if he ever did this again, which basically he's just wanting to uh, go back and forth for angles. Or there's a jig <coughs> you can make. It's not that complicated. I haven't made one yet for bigger angle cuts. And what you want is you want to make sure that the angles are precise. I mean, I don't know. Are we... We're, we're looking at it as, as, as viewing, right? Like, this model itself will be more of a... It could be a gameplay. I'm sure it could be. People wanted it to be. I'm just more thinking of it to be a stand, kind of looking at it. So, <clears throat> what I usually do myself is I'll take the you know, protractor or whatever it's called, and I'll see how much I have to bring it in and put it out. Uh, you want this really level. I think I've said that before. You want this level to the wire. It's a little hard to get really crazy straight because the bar's in the way and this is too big for me to be doing that with. So I sort of have to, have to eye it and um, really hope that it's straight. It will be. So just to get it in there, level, straight. You can get yourself a smaller one. Whatever, whatever you can get, use it, guys. Don't don't be shy. I just put it up to the bottom. I look. Maybe bring it in just a bit. There we go. I think that's your 90 degrees right there. I could be wrong, but it'll cut good. It'll, it'll basically really good tools, guys. There we go. Make sure that has that that pinging noise. And the reason you want that, because it stays, when, when the wire heats up, when the wire heats up and you can see this, the heat coming out of it, uh, you really want this thing to be straight. So when you're cutting, you can see it cut straight through. You get perfect angle styles. Okay, so we don't need to have this on right now. All right, so what the plan is to have is to have the mammoth, as you can see him. He basically, the concept was for him to be charging down to whatever's playing here. So we have that angle. We're still going to slope, slope off from here. Have it more sure. His foot is up. I don't know why they printed that. What we're thinking, or what I'm thinking, is having something under here, like a stone or something. We're going to keep these bits, and we're going to make some stone, kind of sharpy stone walls in the back and then just build into our terrain. So the next step we need to do is to have these glued down. And what I use is hot glue. So we don't have to, you can use PVA glue, uh, Mod Podge, I guess whatever you, whatever you have. Hot glue is always the better one in here for us. And you can see that the, they don't, I don't know if you can see that, but they don't line up. This is a 10 inch piece, this is a 10 inch piece, this is a nine inch piece. You can see I gave it more an angle. So I'm gonna keep it in the middle, and then with our hand tool, we're going to basically shape all the round down here so that it kind of slopes inward. You'll see when I get there. It's just my idea of how I'm doing stuff. Let this heat up 
didn't want to get back to what it's. So the next step was to take the hand tool and cut this, but of course, it didn't record, so sorry. I ended up just making a bunch of grooves and it cutting it on. So now it has a ramp system where the elephant or the mammoth will come charging down all the way here. So the next step we want to do is maybe give it some texture. So what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to use um, we're going to use our tool. <laughs> this is our makeshift tool that we need. Uh, just hot glue and a bunch of foil. Put it on a rolling pin. We just want to texture it up. Sort of flatten it out. Give it all kinds of sort of bumps and nicks. This is going to look like it's a rough edge surface. It's coming down. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on it to get this nice deep root markings in there. All around. And as you can see, that's the texture that we're going for. And it be done. I just have to put this down here. So once we're done with this, a good idea is to let's paint the bottom so it can get harder. Um, I'm going to go off camera and do this. Mod Podge in any color you want. Or you can use you know, a piece of um, cardboard. So it doesn't warp and stuff like that. It shouldn't, it's thick enough, but I just like to paint it. So I'll get back and show you this. All right, so we got it all Mod Podge. We put it all on. So next thing we want to do is we want to put some rocks down. Now, the way this elephant was printed, he had his foot up. For some reason, it looks like he was stomping on something. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting like a, a little stone, like a stone that he's standing on kind of thing. And that also keep him in balance. So. What we're going to do is we just cut out some pieces, random pieces, and then we're just going to take our hot glue gun, and then we're just going to just kind of stick these in random places. I want to make sure that one's proper because the elephant is stepping on it, and then that's fine like that, so it looks like he's on it. And then we'll, we'll, in, we'll install him somehow, not sure yet, maybe... We might have to drill a hole, put some toothpicks in them, then hot glue them down kind of thing. So, again, all we're doing is taking hot glue and randomly sticking pieces all over the place. Like so. And then we're going to go back to the paint and add some more Mod Podge, which will also keep this um, down a lot more better than what it is. We also want to add maybe some spiky um, bits like this around. So it looks like he's coming out of something. We'll go into that one next. So let me just paint this up. And we'll all right, so we're going to install the mammoth on our piece. It's all been painted up. You can see it's all kind of funky looking. So all we want to do, we're going to just use hot glue for this. I drilled some holes at the bottom of his feet, only three. All we want to do is insert hot glue inside the hole so that it has something to bond to. We're going to take another piece or toothpick. We're just using toothpicks, just normal everyday toothpicks. Put a little bit of hot glue on it, just enough so it can bond to it. You gotta be somewhat quick enough because hot glue doesn't stay very hot for very long. You wanna get it in the foot as much as you can. This way you don't have something to stick to when you're pushing it in. Also, we're gonna add hot glue to our mammoth's foot itself in order to make. Uh, it stick better to our diorama. And just give it a little bit of a cleanup because you always get those little wisps that go through. Now what we have is 
sort of like a base to where we want to put him. We know that we want his foot to actually stand Still gotta keep it. We gotta dry up a bit so it's kind of solid. Yeah, just turn it over there like that. We want it so that we can just press down a bit on it so we know where we're going. is now in place so that's easy to do now if we want to this is going to be it's not a playable area it could be but we're going to keep the mammoth on there for ourselves because this is going to be mine like i said so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually take about oops, maybe just redo this guy right here you guys stuck in there Hold on, guys, bear with me. Sometimes it happens worse than others. What we're going to do is we're just going to take the hot glue off of this guy. So we'll re hot glue him to the mammoth. Now, one thing that's that I got to tell you guys when you're gluing these items together like I, these are in three parts um crazy glue does work i mean sorry hot glue does work not very well it doesn't stay forever what i used was crazy glue and baking soda really good trick it works very very well so all we're going to do is put more hot glue just sort of whoop, on the tips of these guys and we can clean up the wisps after. Follow where our holes were. And then just push down like that. Right now is secure into the place set. So let me just shut that off so you can see. And now we have our mammoth coming out. You see we did I did the rocks adding them just adding color to it some whites some reds some blacks some blues some yellows some oranges just go with the colors because in the light it has a whole funky look to it all right so now that we have our mammoth secure and i'm saying it's secure because it's in there we could decide how the rest of the, the set will go so we got to determine what we're going to do with these guys which will be placed around here and then we also have the characters that are fighting either you could have them as the they could sit on here be the the ones that are i guess attacking or you could have them attacking down here in which we could see that they are attacking the mammoth stopping them so we have a whole bunch of these guys and these can, these can be placed anywhere now. They are black now, but we need to repaint them to brown. So we need to make a configuration of what this is going to look like. We want to stop the mammoth. Not saying that it will, but it sure would slow them down. So what we're going to look at is just adding a bunch of these spikes to the ground. And, and we, have, we have plenty of them, so we're not worried about... Um, missing out on any but we just don't want the mammoth to come through all right so just an example our base will look somewhat similar to this and then we could have these guys they aren't painted yet either in the background so this will be part one done and then we'll get on to having these painted like a brown because they are made out of well supposed to be made out of wood they're pla they're plastic and we'll do that. And you can add a giant frog. Look, I 3D printed a frog. Ah, this is going on a project, and I'll show you guys soon. They're both attacking. All right. So we will add uh, 
some color to these guys, some color to that, and then do some flocking maybe, put a little bit of gravel, and keep on working on it. So this is part one. Stay tuned. We'll do part two. All right.